Good Saturday morning. Today's gospel, again, it's Luke, and it's the famous story of the prodigal son. You know the story, I don't have to repeat it. But the, the prodigal son coming back. You know what I take that to be? I, let me try it, and I'll leave you alone. I won't go bug you anymore, okay? <laughs> this morning, I think that to be Western culture and civilization. We're the prodigal son. We, we took off and we lost our wealth. We're dirt poor right now. But we see, we, if we go back to the father's house, we can at least be a servant there, maybe make a buck and sleep in a clean bed. And the way back, we find the father overwhelmingly accepting and restoring us to our dignity. I believe that, actually, very strongly. I never thought of it, the prodigal son as a Western culture, but that's exactly what I'm thinking at this moment. I believe this stuff. Yeah, I do. I find myself more and more teaching that stuff to the kids because I don't want our kids to get discouraged. I think about that a lot. You got, what a privilege. 82, free, 82 years old and I'm talking to 20-year-olds and they actually listen to me. What a gift for me they are and that my life has turned out the way it has. I got a chance to share stuff with them. You know, I'm not trying to... They can read better than I can. They're a hell of a lot smarter than I am. But what I try to show them is the wisdom... Uh, the philosophical wisdom that is rooted in, philo in philosophical tradition, but especially as it nurtures, to my mind, a virtuous life, Aristotle. But also their hope in themselves and belief in themselves and belief in tomorrow. And in that sense, I'm offering them the gospel. And I, they know I'm, I'm a priest. They know I'm Christian. And I offer that as a hope. I don't want them to get discouraged. They worry. Kids are worried today about things that, you know, the war of a global warming and all that. And, I try to tell them, you've got to believe in tomorrow. You're the leaders of tomorrow. Believe in yourself. Believe in tomorrow. And I think God doesn't call us to yesterday. He calls us to the fruitfulness of tomorrow and to make a difference in tomorrow. And I look at these young, beautiful young men and women, so smart, so good. I think, don't give up. Don't quit now. Not at 19 years old. It's not even warming up yet. You're not even warmed up. And I know they're worried about global warming and all that. And they got reasons to be. And in one class I have environmental ethics. Most of these kids are environmental sciences. I say, you know this stuff better than I do. But I said, I remember when I could see the dust fall because of the soot in the air when I lived in New York 50 years ago. Now it's as clean as a whistle. I remember when you couldn't swim in Long Island Sound except in certain places because it was so polluted. Couldn't eat clams that came out of certain beaches. I remember that. We knew which beaches you could go swimming in. No, it was clean as a whistle. Come on, believe in tomorrow. Christ calls us, calls us into tomorrow, not into yesterday. The, you know, one time, uh, Al, this is 50 years ago, I asked one of the old priests, tell us about the good old days. And he looked around and he says, you're living in them. That's right. Don't look at the good old days. Learn from the good old days. Learn what we learned. And believe in tomorrow. Believe in tomorrow. That's the truth. Believe in tomorrow. And if we're prodigal sons, then come back. Keep, think of our culture. Come back to the gospel. Come forward to the gospel. Come back to the Father who calls us into tomorrow. Calls us into the future. You see? The boy looks forward to coming back, having plummeted in the course of his life. He seeks a tomorrow of redemption, even though he has to wait on tables and maybe work as a servant. Instead, he's restored as a king, as a prince. See? For whatever motives. And I do think of that prodigal. It just dawned on me today, the prodigal son is Western culture. God doesn't abandon us. He calls us back to himself, but he can't coerce us. But I have to think like the prodigal kid, dirt poor, sleeping with the pigs, and <laughs> grateful to eat their meals with them. The pigs, okay, we've hit the bottom. And you know, remember AA, we hit the bottom, we seek redemption, and that's tomorrow. Redemption is not in yesterday, it's in tomorrow. And so we go back to, so that we can go forward. We go back to the love of the Father. We remember the love of the Father. We remember Christ, and we go forward to re read him again. We go forward in life. See? And I'm thinking my kids in class. I don't preach to them, but I did. one kid got on my back the other day. He says, you don't talk about Christ enough. I said, I'm a philosopher in that class. Why don't you just ask me? You ask me a question, I'll answer it. 
Not, I have Muslim kids in there now, I'll answer. But I'm not going to promote it. In class, I'm going to promote virtue, philosophical virtue, because that's what my job is. That's what I'm supposed to do. See? But at the same time, I'm a believer, a committed life believer. I give my life to the cross, to Christ, and to the church. And I believe in the church. Just ask me. You'll see where I see the role of the church as a, as a servant of the future, the servant of the world as she reaches into tomorrow, as she seeks, seeks tomorrow, a fruitful, a flourishing tomorrow, and an eternal tomorrow. But I, this world, we are called, we are called to nurture each other in this life. Yeah, right? In the hope of building a better tomorrow. I believe that stuff. I mean that. How could I be in a college education and not teaching kids in college if I didn't believe in the fruitfulness of the tomorrow's promise? How could I? I look at it in the face all day long. And what I'm trying to do, as any philosopher and any humanist would be doing, trying to guide them, not teach them, but guide them into a wisdom, a humanistic wisdom that will help them personally flourish in their lives and also create a social uh, body that will be flourishing. Aristotle says you can't be, it's difficult to be virtuous without a virtuous society. You have to have both, and he's right. So we're trying to rebuild a virtuous world in order for us to be virtuous within it. The result being happiness, a real flourishing of life, that we live a full and rich human life, a very rich and human existence. Isn't that neat? That's the belief in tomorrow. I have that in my bones. Even though I won't see it, I'm so conscious of my age and time as the chimes are billing, chiming right now. I know my life is virtually over and I have no errors, but I believe in tomorrow. If it's not my tomorrow, it's the tomorrow of, my, of the students. It's tomorrow of the human race. And I hope by my teaching and my presence in their lives, I give them confidence in themselves and trust in the power of tomorrow, in the beauty and calling of tomorrow, and never give up, never get discouraged, never give up. Live, live today in the hope of tomorrow with the memory of the past. There's a saying, if you forget the past, you're condemned to repeat it. You'll be a fool if you don't know the past, but you don't know it to, to exemplify it and to repeat it, but to learn from it to create a new and better world. I told my students this is the last thing I want to say to you. When I became chairman here in 89, since I graduated in 76 from SLU, my first instinct was to recover that past, okay? Exactly as I had known it. I wasn't here six months and I knew that was over. That wasn't true. You couldn't replicate that past. We were at a point of a new adventure. And I remember thinking, I have to, talk, I have to listen to the young students, the young faculty, the three youngest faculty, not, the, not just the old timers that were here who are my teachers, but I had to begin to envision the department for tomorrow in the eyes of, through the eyes of these three young faculty members. What do you dream of? How do you see tomorrow for the department? And I found that they became, they became my guides, my co-leaders. My co I listened to the young, as they forged their vision of tomorrow, we became one hell of a department, okay? If, we had, if I had done what I wanted to do initially, it's what I thought the wisdom lay in the past as such, and replicated the past, we'd have died. But I didn't, I learned from the past. I'm indebted forever to the past, but I dreamed about tomorrow. And with the young, I wanted to forge a new tomorrow for the department, and I did it. See, that's what I tell these kids. Learn from the past, nurture, learn from the past, be nurtured by the past, but dream of tomorrow. You're called not to yesterday. You're called to remember yesterday only insofar as yesterday enriches today in its pursuit of tomorrow. That is the truth. That is the truth.